Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Steve Higgins. He's with the University of Kentucky and he is the Director of Animal and Environmental Compliance. Good morning. Yes, mud is a problem in the state of Kentucky because of the rainfall that we get during the winter time and the low temperatures that we have that can evaporate that moisture and stiffen up the soil. So in order to have livestock for feeding areas and whatnot in the winter time, what I recommend is, is installing a heavy use area pad or a heavy traffic pad. Typically these are made out of uh, geotextile fabric and rock uh, matrixes. You wanna use a non-woven geotextile fabric, probably something that's in the eight ounce range is ideal. The fabric comes in widths of, I guess, 10, 12s and 15s. I'm normally, uh, I usually buy rolls of 15. Um, and so what you need to do is, is you need to remove the topsoil because topsoil just does not have this, the strength, the bearing capacity to support the weight of animals. And when that soil gets wet, they're going to sink. So you need to remove probably about eight inches of topsoil, depending on where you are, and then put down the filter fabric in that pan, that cutout, and then place in the rock inside of that to basically provide about an eight inch lift. Now, the, the most critical thing is, is trying to pick out the proper site for installing one of these pads because soil properties have inherent properties as far as the ability to uh, dissipate moisture or hold on to it. So you wanna find, basically look at a map for your, your soil uh, hydrologic series and try to find something that's in the B or C range, which is a soil that's well-drained, but not too well-drained. Um, but then once you put animals on it, they're gonna compact it and that's gonna cause problems. But those sites are the best for basically uh, of alleviating mud because you don't want to get into a soil that holds moisture. What you want to get is is up on a summit position like up on the top of a hill where you about, have about maybe eight inches of topsoil to remove which is going to get down to a, a stiff clay compactable layer. That's where you want to start. So you put down the filter fabric and you put down the rock. Now those are normal pads. Up at Eden Shale Farm up in Owenton, Kentucky we've been partnering with the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association. I'm going to try and out different uh, materials to use to extend the longevity of those heavy traffic pads. My normal heavy traffic pad out of geotextile fabric and rock, eight inch lift, is probably gonna last with a normal producer probably five to seven years. That's unacceptable to me. You know, the lifespan of most engineered services should be a minimum of 15. So there are some additives that you can create in this matrix to extend the longevity of it. One of the things that we've done is, is we have purchased uh, recycled tires, mm -hmm. semi-tires, where basically the sidewall was cut out by the vendor and they provided me with what's called the tread cylinder, which is the actual tread. And what you do is, is you lay that down on your filter fabric and backfill it with rock. And when you come across it with a front end loader, you're not hauling away any rock because you can't go through that inch and a half thick rubber band. That's one way. Another thing that we've been working on is a, uh, a plastic grid that where you, again, you put down your filter fabric, maybe put down four to six inches worth of rock and then put down this plastic grid that you roll out and it's about maybe two inches thick, you know, the, it, the depth varies based on manufacturers, but then you backfill that plastic grid with rock. So now in, in both cases, whether you're using the tires or the grid, you have a permeable surface, you have water that's gonna go through it, but nothing's gonna move, nothing's gonna shift. And again, when you come across it with a front end loader, it's gonna slide across that plastic grid. You're not gonna gouge into a wet spot, haul out a bunch of rock, and that extends the longevity and the lifespan of these pads. What about the economics behind it? Are those expensive to put down? The tires that I've been purchasing, you know, which, which will basically cover about a four by four square foot area, I can probably get them for a, a dollar or a dollar fifty. So that's 25 cents a square foot. That's nothing. Uh, putting in a concrete pad in, in this economy is probably going to cost you around four dollars and a quarter a square foot. So that's pretty inexpensive apparatus. Now the plastic grid since COVID uh, has gone up 100%, uh, which is unfortunate. But and given the, the price difference, I think putting in the plastic grid is probably the same as installing concrete. So if you're going to do a heavy traffic pad that's going to be outside, then concrete's probably your choice. If placed properly, easily lasts 30 years. If you're going to be in a barn and doing some feeding where you need drainage, then I like the plastic grid because you can get some drainage underneath of it. The other thing is, is do not ever install any of these pads flat, like level. Uh, depending on how many animals you have on it, you want to slope on there to get it to drain. Uh, when it becomes compacted and doesn't uh, infiltrate liquids as much. So then the higher the stocking density you're going to put on it, like if you had animals in a barn, 
then the more slope you need to have on that floor to get it to drain naturally, but then also get this other stuff going as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.